light. It shapes the tone, mood and feel of the atmosphere. Without light, all you have is a black frame. Whilst not every camera has amazing low light ability, Panasonic believe they may have the answer. The Clever Owls at Panasonic have released the mutant brother of the GH5, a camera that intelligently utilizes a dual native ISO system that, when matched with Panasonic's Venus Engine 10, provides greater clarity in high ISOs. Its impressive ISO performance silences critics of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. But first, it's got to beat this guy. Long championed as the low light king, the A7S II is what many consider to be the ultimate run and gun video package. It too has incredible low light ability, 4K video and slow motion, but this is a full frame beast. These two cameras are priced rather similarly and seem to offer a very similar feature set but which can convince you to part with your money. To test out the two cameras, I've decided to take them here, Sipinyo in Central, a TIE fighter's paradise, and the perfect testing ground for our two cameras in a run and gun scenario. Thanks to my assumptions that we were rendering to 1080, there's a lot of balls in this first shot. Looking at the two images, both cameras offer plenty of detail with the GH5S offering a bit more sharpness. Both cameras will grade considerably well, though the latitude of the 10 bit on the GH5S will offer better colours and will be more robust during heavy colour grades. Though in terms of image quality, both perform admirably, thus we've gave each camera a point. Oh dear. Today I will be on the GH5S and our resident videographer will be on the A7S II. No problem. Fight. Continuing our tests, we had to enter the ring. The GH5S exhibited some knees of jello as it relied purely on the lens's optical image stabilization. With its 5-axis in-body image stabilization, the A7S II had the obvious advantage here. This may have been a win for the A7S II, but it too was hardly a stellar performer once movement was involved. Overall though, it's a significant enough difference for it to win the point here. The slow motion coming from the GH5S is not only slower, but also looks better than the mush the A7S II is giving us. It's been improved since its GH4 days, and here I've set it to 200 frames per second, whilst the A7S is shooting at half of that frame rate. Here it's an easy win for the GH5S. Setting the shutter angle to 179 made a huge difference here, however above that is the exceedingly deep depths of field coming from the Micro Four Thirds sensor. Surprisingly autofocus kept up quite well, whereas the shallower depths of field from the full frame meant that the A7S II had to work harder, resulting in some focus problems. Whilst not a completely convincing win, we're awarding the point anyway to the GH5S.
an easy win here for the GH5S as its design allows for far more flexibility and mobility. Notorious for its battery life, the A7S II fared far worse here than the GH5S. With a dual card slot and a full HDMI connection, it's another point for the GH5S. For a micro four thirds camera, GH5S has low light ability. It's simply incredible. But against the low light king, its performance pales in comparison. Though we should still marvel at the impressiveness of Panasonic's new sensor. In terms of value for money, they're both priced quite similarly. Thus, sensor size alone, this is a win for the Sony. Also, considering the flange distance of the E-mount, you can pretty much adapt any lens onto the A7S II. A worthy effort from Panasonic, it proved a worthy opponent to the A7S II. Whilst it was unable to dethrone the low-light king, it performed really rather well on the day. Whilst it might not be a compelling enough case for you to switch from your A7S II, it does prove that there may be exciting things ahead for the Micro Four Thirds sensor. And it does make us wonder what other exciting things we can expect, especially from the A7S III. Touch gloves, one minute on the clock. On you go. Oh, oh, oh.